What's up developers and welcome back to a new video where we will be setting up a new database that we will be using through the rest of this course. Quick pause. Do you want to support the channel and want me to continue on creating content? You can support the channel on Patreon right now where you get benefits such as a private Discord group where you can share your coding issues and other developers will help you out. If you are interested to join, the link will be in the description down below. Up until this point, we only worked with static content, meaning that we created a variable inside the controller, passed it through the view and printed it out. In the real world, you probably won't be working with static content. Symfony provides a suite of tools that you can use to interact with your application's database in order to pull in dynamic data. Since we're working with a framework and the main goal is to make our lives a lot easier, we will be using something which is called an object relational mapper. And the shortcut of it is ORM. And in particular, we'll be using Doctrine as our ORM since it will treat PHP classes and objects like they are tables and records. This will prevent us from writing SQL queries for CRUD operations, and the ORM will do it for us. Before we can make use of our database, we need to make sure that we got MySQL up and running, because we need to have a database to interact with. In the beginning of this course, we've set up MySQL through the terminal, and based on the settings you provided, you should be knowing your username and password. There are multiple ways on how you could create a database. Personally, I find the Symfony console command the easiest method, because it reads the database configuration and creates the database. So let's make the terminal a little bit bigger, and let's perform the Symfony console command. Right here, you will find an entire list of commands that you can perform. What we want to do is to do something with Doctrine, because that's the ORM we're going to use for our database. So let's scroll up to the D section right here, and you will find a complete list of commands that you can perform on Doctrine. There are a lot of commands right here, but for now, let's focus on the Doctrine database create command that we have right here, and the database drop command that we have. The name speaks for itself, right? You can create a new database through Doctrine. You can delete a database, or you can even import a SQL file. There is actually a shortcut command, so you don't need to scroll up to the Doctrine section, which is Symfony console, list the Doctrine commands. If we hit enter, scroll up, you will only see Doctrine commands that are available in your application. So let's focus on creating a database first. Let's perform the symphony console Doctrine colon database colon create command. Whoops, we're getting a couple error messages right here. So let's start off at the top. We got an opening and closing curly bracket right here with critical inside of it, which will tell us the level of error we got. This one is critical, so we can't do anything else. Now what is the error? It's basically telling us that the connection has failed to connect to our local host with a port of 5432. This should make sense, because we haven't even set up our database credentials. It does not know where to look to store the MySQL database doctrine is trying to create for us. Luckily, there is a .env file in the root of our application. Before we add our credentials in the .env file, we need to pull in two packages through Composer. So let's do that first. The first one is called Composer require symphony forward slash orm dash pack. Let's hit enter. And it's pulling everything in right now. And the second one will be Composer require double dash dev because we're going to pull the package in in development mode, the package has a name of symphony forward slash maker dash bundle. Let's hit enter. Now let's write down no, because we don't want to move our key. Now let's say that we want to rerun the command with dev. So let's say yes. All right, that was pretty fast. Now the next step is to open our .env file in the root of our application. Now let me make my terminal a little bit smaller. In this file, you will find environment variables, and we don't have that many right now. We only have the app underscore env, the app secret, and the database URL, which is actually the one that we need. At the moment, it's telling us that it's using Postgres, but we don't want that. On the line above, you will find a command for MySQL. So let's copy it, and let's replace it with the URL that we have as our environment value. If you are not familiar with these types of connection strings, you need to change up some things right here. The first value is db underscore user, which will be the user you're using in MySQL. In my case, it will be root. Then we got a colon, 
followed with a DB password, which will be the password of their user root. In my case, I've set my password equal to Dari1234. Right after the at sign, you'll be seeing the local host, which is all right because that's what we're going to use, and our port is all right as well. After our port, we have a forward slash followed with the DB underscore name, which we need to replace as well. Now we're going to create a database with the same name of our project, which will be movies. Then the last value that we can change is the server version right here, which has been set equal to 5.7, but we're not going to change that. All right, this should do the trick for us. If we navigate back to the CLI, hit the arrow up to create our database again. Let's hit enter. And as you could see, our CLI has returned a message that our database called movies has been created for a connection name of default. Let's double check it. Now I've got a database client extension added in Visual Studio Code called database. So let me click on it. Let me refresh all my databases that I have. And right at the bottom, you will see a new database created called movies. That being said, this was it for this video where I showed you how you could create your database through Doctrine. I've showed you what the most common error messages are and how you can set up your connection string. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.